and I'll share it to each of your pages, Facebook pages. Okay, Celeste, you're live. Thank you. Good afternoon. You're listening to the new WCEG network on WCEGtalkradio.com. Click live stream or watch us live on your smart TV, YouTube, WCEG network. I'm Celeste Giordano, your show host, along with my co-host, Sarah Poe, and this is the Global Legacy and Wealth Building. And we're the Worldwide Community Empowerment Group, where we speak life into the community. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and on Instagram at WCEG underscore talk underscore radio, and at WCEG Network. And last but not least, our disclaimers, the topics and opinions are those of the show host and guest, not WCEG Network. Thank you for the continued support. Well, hey, Sarah. Hey, Sharita. How are you today? Doing amazing. Oh, amazing. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. We are so excited to have you. And Sarah, it's so good to see you. We have tax season behind you, so to speak. So to speak. And, <laughs> and you're ready, to, getting ready to go on a two-week vacation. So yep. more power to you. It's well-deserved, well-earned with COVID-19. And tell us a little bit about what you do, Sarah, in the name of your company, please. Okay, I am Sarah Poe with Poe's Accounting Services. We're a small accounting firm um, north of Atlanta in Decula, Georgia. Um, well, we take your mess and present it to the IRS is one thing that we do. Um, we like to help small businesses to achieve their goals, um, to know what their numbers are, and um, to do the best they can with the money that they have, especially in these times. Um, you, you just don't know what tomorrow will bring. So we try to help them make the best of all that. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that. And again, I'm Celeste Giordano with CelesteGiordano.com. I'm a master sales strategist and a business mentor. I help business entrepreneurs, direct sales teams and corporations exponentially increase sales and revenue through lead generation, building relationships and accountability. Again, Celeste Giordano with CelesteGiordano.com. Sarah, I'm so excited about our guest tonight. I know that for four years, you have heard me talk about Sharita Harry Oglesby, Oglesby. And I've always said she is the master, the queen of grant writing. And so we have finally had the opportunity to have Sharita with us tonight. And she's coming all the way from Arkansas. I, what is the name of the town, Sharita? <laughs> it's actually Hattieville and I, I didn't even know that this town existed and <laughs> because I always uh, we always called it Cleveland um, where my grandmother was raised and but it, it's actually the the um, area is called Hattieville. Hattieville well uh -huh. in the in, in the middle of Arkansas and I'm excited to have Sharita with us because I met Sharita in 2016 in the Yucatan, Mexico at an international summit where we served uh, at a business uh, summit as well as we served the community in refurbishing uh, a kindergarten, I think, or, a, or grade school or elementary school uh, uh -huh. where we refurbished and did some painting and landscaping and brought school educational things we brought clothes and all kinds of things that we did for refurbishing this group and then we went back in 2017 to the same business summit uh, to Jamaica where we did a business summit and then we served the uh, school that was getting ready to be closed down in Jamaica and due to the the money that we raised in a matter of a few hours that hours, we donated yes. yes it was a few hours that we raised yeah. something like $14,000 that kept the school mm -hmm. open. And then we went and did a service project where we refurbished, we tore down walls, built walls, and it was an amazing opportunity. And, um, and I've heard Sharita speak at both of these summits and, and she's just an amazing individual when it comes to for-profit and nonprofit. And a little bit about Sharita is she's an economic de development specialist. She's a sought after speaker, motivator, best selling author, radio personality, and business strategist. She possesses nearly 30 years of community and economic development experience, 
has raised over 30 million for global product projects and served as a professional economic and business strategist for global leaders, city officials, chambers of commerce, and hundreds of businesses, nonprofits, and community leaders across the U.S. and in more than 14 countries. That is wow. amazing. That's impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, also, operating by her model, you are you are your only limitation. Yayo. Yeah, yo. Oh, yeah, yo. Uh, Sharita proves no limit to the accomplishments you can achieve when it comes to impacting lives and making a difference. And everybody knows that's one of my favorite sayings is that we are making a difference in our community. Yeah. She has not only built her career on doing exactly what she loves to do every day, Sharita expertly helps others live out loud in their passion. Amazingly, she accomplishes this by showing you how to secure profit for your passion by securing funding from the other investors and grant funders. She has provided specialized expansion and tactical approaches for businesses and large and small municipalities to execute complex economic development strategies for enhanced business sustainability, infrastructure restorations, commerce attraction, retention, and tourism. Since 1994, Sharita has tirelessly, tirelessly worked behind the scenes, coaching, facilitating, and or strategizing with some of the top social entrepreneurs, celebrities, professional athletes, and organizations in the world, including former president of Mexico, Vincent Fox, UN Ambassador Brian Blake, Parliament Representatives of Trinidad, legendary actress Tippi Hedren, Oscar winner Hilary Swank, NFL great Jim Brown, NBA star Halen Rose, Hall of Famer Bootsy Collins, actor Hannibal Buress, producer actor Bill Duke, actor Anthony Anderson, comedians Michael Kohler and Kim Coles, motivational speaker Les Brown and Lisa Nichols, and actress Tatiana Ali, just to name a few. Oh my goodness, what a lineup. I feel like I need to pin five stars on you right there, Sharita. <laughs> <laughs> she has served as an instructor at the University of Central Arkansas in Conway, Arkansas, and National Park College, Hot Springs, Arkansas, teaching grant procurement, project development, and econo uh, economic policies. She has been honored and featured with some of the top Renaissance women in the world, including First Lady Michelle Obama, amazing lady, the late Maya Angel Gentileau, Coretta Scott King, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, and renowned R&B songstress Chaka Khan, just to name a few. Whew. What a lineup, Sharita. What else can we say? I mean, the show is yours. We are here to listen to your words of wisdom with that. Amazing. But it is so great to have you with us here today, Sharita. Uh, uh, I love the sign behind you. I love what your so, sign oh, says yeah. behind you. Yeah. Do one thing every day that makes you happy. Now, someone yeah. said only one thing. Well, the thing <laughs> is, some people find it hard to even think about one thing that makes them happy. They're so caught up with, with all of the junk that's going on right now from COVID-19 to now politics to, you know, the Black Lives Matter and, and uh, you know, uh, community and, and all of what's happening as far as um, race relations, that people find it very hard to focus on one thing that can make them happy. And so I live by that. And even my screensaver is the saying by uh, Wayne Dyer. And it says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Change. Ab so absolutely. It's just so important. So thank you for having me on. Absolutely. So you have gone by way of California to this town in Arkansas and tell us a little bit, speed us up on the journey that got you from California to Arkansas. Well, it actually started by meeting my husband, Ray. I and when um, you change oh, the way wait, you look wait, at wait, things, wait, wait. I didn't mean the to do that. You look at so change. change. Um, uh, and so in, in meeting Ray, it, it's something how God works because I truly hate to fly, but I, I was flying all the time uh, to conferences, speaking engagements, that kind of thing. And even Celeste, it, it's hard for me to believe that 
we met so long ago with those events, how time flies. But I've always loved RV life. And we had one with my parents uh, in growing up. And I meet this wonderful guy. And I'm talking to him about, a, you know, I'm wanting to schedule this next tour. And he's retired. So he said, well, why don't we go in the RV? And I'm like, what? So I, I plan my tours that will give us enough time to drive from one city to another. He and I are new in our relationship. We ended up going through 23 states. And wow. just what happened also, I was ready to leave California. I was even looking at leave, uh, moving out of the country. I was considering Paris. I love Paris. I've spent time there and I have friends there. And I, I kept thinking I want to be in the countryside in France, right? You know, I've always loved like even, uh, what is that movie, Tuscany? Uh, under yes. the Tuscany. Under, under Tuscany oh. sun. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I wanted to live that lifestyle, right? And then I meet Ray and while we're touring, we're looking at, okay, what does this feel like? Well, he and I both wanted small town. And now fast forward to where at the end of the tour, I was going to be going into Mississippi training with the mayor at that time, Daryl Johnson in um, Mount Bayou, Mississippi. And it ended up canceling. Well, my uncle was a, it was a small town mayor in Arkansas. And he calls that exact day. And he says, are you still on your tour? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, can you drop down through Arkansas? And I said, you know what, Unc, that's perfect because we just had something to cancel this morning. We were getting ready to head back. We were in DC, getting ready to head back to California. And I said, so we'll come down through Arkansas. Now get this, my husband was born in Pine Bluff. I have family that was, that was here. My dad was born in Damascus. My mom was born here in this, and, but we hadn't thought about Arkansas. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this entire story is because ever since I've been working in this arena since 1994, when people start doing what they love, when you start following what's in your gut, things and doors will open that you never could have even fathomed. Arkansas wasn't even on our radar. It wasn't even a part of the tour. But when we came here, I was just coming to train for that weekend. My uncle and his team were going after a grant to put a uh, road through their town, which they ended up getting the $500,000 grant. Hey. But we liked Arkansas so much, we stayed a month and we decided to stay here. So now fast forward, my aunt, she's on the phone with me one morning and she says, what are you doing? And I said, Ray and I are looking at some land. We want to get some land and you know start uh, homesteading. She said, well, you know, that land is still up there in the hills. And I said, what is land? And she said, the family's land. I didn't even know it was still in the family. Mm. It's, the, it's the almost 30 acres that I used to travel to as a young girl. My grandmother and her siblings, 13 siblings were born here. So here we are <laughs> on the family's land that's been in our family for uh, over 200 years. And that's a blessing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All of it, all of yes. it. My husband, the yes. touring. And now here, and that's why I tell people it is nothing but the grace of God. I'm, I'm very grateful. So, Ab absolutely. Yeah. You know, God has everything lined up for us, um, Sharita and Sarah. And we never, we don't sometimes think that he has the people lined up. He has our house lined up. He has everything lined up for us of where we're going to go, the paths we're going to go, the journey we're going to take, the people we're going to meet. And we just have to trust him and trust that journey. Uh -huh. And, and that's what you've done and look where it has led you. Yeah, yeah. And that's why even when I'm teaching, I ask, what is your passion? What is it that you truly love? Not is it, now I'll ask what you do, but if your eyes don't dance, if I don't see in your, in your um, um, reaction, in your motion, that is something that you love. Because you know, when we start talking about things we love, we almost can't be still. We get very animated, like I'm, I'm talking with my hands or our body language will reveal something. You don't just sit there stiff and just say, oh, I do this, I do this. No, your body shows Those. whether you're passionate about it or not. <laughs> and so when I'm talking to a client or even if I'm meeting someone and talking about what is it that, uh, that you know, they're, if they called me about something, I listen. I want to hear the passion because you can hear it, you can feel it. Because at that time it becomes soul to soul talking. No, and that, that's so true. And just to, to talk a little bit on what you just said is when I have client calls, when they first become a client, we have like a 90 minute discovery call, just like I'm sure you do as well. And I, yeah, I have a, 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 several pages of questions that they fill out. 
And, and then I say, I want you to call and we're going to go over this. And they said, well, can't you read that? I said, of course I can read it, but I want to hear you say it because I can see mm -hmm. and feel the passion when you're talking about this as opposed to me just reading it, because that is uh -huh. so true. That is so true. You can tell when yes. somebody really likes what they're doing or they really want to move forward with this or they don't like this. But if you, if you're, if you don't see it and you don't hear it, you know, then reading it, you, you can misunderstand people. Right. Right. Yeah. Very easily. And so, and that's why the book that I've been writing on and my publisher is going to fire me because it's called, there's a grant for that. And believe it or not, <laughs> I don't care what your passion. I don't care what your industry, there's a grant for that. There's somebody that needs you that could not afford you. And that's why even with legal aid, see people think those lawyers are working for free. No, they're working for the individuals that need them where they don't have to pay for it, but funding is covering their costs, you know? And so uh, no matter what your industry, there's someone that needs you and you can actually get funding to cover that. Well, and, th and that's so true, Sharita. And I mean, I didn't really know anything about grant writing until I met you in 2016 and in your uh -huh. talk. And then you sparked an interest in me to learn more. And so I learned more. And then I came back a year later and learned even more. But uh -huh. uh, being in the, in the servant leadership position that I'm in with people, I have been associated with a lot of people that I'll give you an example of a, a gentleman up in a town where my mom lives in Tennessee. They have, I don't know, I don't know how many acres, um, we'll say several hundred acres, but they built a winery and they have, and they have cows and, uh -huh. and they, they grow a garden. And so they have what they do now. And he was in the air force and he did grant writing for the air force. So he knows all about this grant writing. Well, they mm -hmm. have gotten millions and millions of dollars in grants for this winery because what they've done is now they have the winery but because they have these cows on there and they raise these whatever these cows are fancy cows and then they s sell them to the people in the community that, you know and then they raise the gardens and people come and they they get to have the stuff out of the garden so you know there's a grant for that that you teach people how to grow their stuff and come get this stuff and be a part of this farming industry right here. And then the yeah. solar panels come out. So now they got solar panels that are creating electricity on, on the star. And I'm sitting there, you know, this guy, he, I love him. He and his wife are amazing and very, very smart. And, you know, several millions of dollars in grants This was started with a winery. Hmm. See, the thing is, is that when you are making a difference, when you're touching someone's life, when you're helping individuals to pivot, when, uh, when you're helping with depression, if you're, if you're aiding suicide prevention, if you're providing legal services for the disadvantaged, if you're a dentist and doing dental work for low-income individuals, see, people, there are people that just don't know that they can get grants to cover those costs, okay? You Absolutely. guys, there are nonprofit bars. There are nonprofit comedy clubs. Now, people will get angry when they hear that, but that's because they don't understand how the nonprofit arena helps to, helps the economy, helps the, you know, Celeste, you've heard me say this, the nonprofit arena is the third largest business sector in the United States behind manufacturing and retail. Google hmm. it, whoever is listening, if you just go into Google, go to a Google search and type in nonprofit, comma, third largest business sector and press enter and look at all of the different articles and write-ups that come up about it. So people have in their mind, they have a perception that the nonprofit arena means you can't make a profit, you can't get paid, it's a whole lot of work for nothing. And all of that is a myth. I was right. on a call yesterday and it's someone that talks to nonprofits all the time. And he said, well, you know, um, nonprofits, you know, you don't wanna go after any grant money because if you get any grant money from the government or any other, the funder, they tell you what to do and they're in charge of your organization. That is so not true. When you submit a grant proposal, you're writing what you want that money for. You're giving them your program design, your strategy, what you're going to do, who you're going to help, what salary you want. And if they approve that, then 
are they, they're expecting you to do what you said you were going to do, but who, who designed the program? You did. You, you did. Yeah. You did. You of that money. So they just want you to do what you said you they were going to do. do. They're not, they're not controlling you. They're not telling you what to do. They're at, they're, they're, they're expecting you to do what you said you were going to do on what they granted you the money for. So people are, have so many misconceptions about this arena that so often when I get ready to work with a client, I've got to break down all these barriers, barriers if they come to me. See, a lot of people won't even step into it because of all the things that they've heard that are n totally not true. You know, Absolutely. the non arena helped us to come out of the last recession, okay? When for-profit jobs were decreasing by 3.3%, non-profit jobs were increasing by 2.5%. Again, it is a trillion dollar industry. And so like right now with COVID-19, I'm busier now than I've probably been in 10 or 15 years because Not people later. are hearing about COVID-19 grants. They're having to shift their business. They're thinking that they're, they're hearing about the nonprofit arena. So where people had doubts about the nonprofit arena and grants, they're hearing about it more. But if you look at any time in history where there's been a recession or a depression or a catastrophe, that's when the nonprofit arena steps up even more right. because it is there right. to address needs, okay? Absolutely, Sharita, one of our listeners said, could you give the Google search engine again, please? Uh, for, what the did third, I, oh, third. for the nonprofit arena, just type in, uh, um, what did I say? Oh, nonprofit, comma, third largest business sector. Very good. Thank you. Well, one of my first questions was, mm -hmm. does nonprofit mean you can't make a profit? Obviously, you can. <laughs> there are multi-million dollar and billion dollar nonprofits. See, most people don't realize this, but hospitals are nonprofit unless they say privately owned. Are they making a profit? I mean, uh, you know, um, now, I like to mention the NFL. They had been a nonprofit since their inception. They didn't, they just changed their status. And we know how long the NFL has been around. They just changed their status from nonprofit to for profit in 2015. And I think it's because people started giving them such a hard time for being a nonprofit. I mean, it was going viral. The NFL is a nonprofit. They, why are they a nonprofit? They're, they're making profit. You guys, there are, there are up to 29 different kinds of nonprofits. And see, with the, see the, the individual teams were not nonprofit, but the league. And still, the PGA is a nonprofit. The National Hockey League is a nonprofit. Hmm. See, with being up to 29 different kinds of nonprofits, think about whether it's a, the NFL, the PGA, or whatever. Think about the NFL, how many jobs they create with one single game. From the people that are working, Thousands. the concession stands, Thousands. to the, the, the Thousands. people that are cleaning, to the people that maintain the stadium, uh, the workers there, to the to the people that supply the straws, the buns, the hot dogs, the hamburgers. And so when with that nonprofit status, it allowed them certain tax breaks. Okay. Yeah. And so so but and 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 that's what I mean. A lot of people get upset when they hear that, but they don't understand how it contributes to that local economy and sustainability of all the businesses that is supporting because of them supplying the inventory or whatever. And so it allowed them to have those breaks. So we get upset about something, we wanna change it, but we don't really realize what the repercussions are going to be. Right. Well, let me ask you something, Sarita. Is it possible to have a for-profit and a nonprofit company? Yes, yes. And I try and get more small companies to see that. Think about this, there's the Ford and then the Ford Foundation, Walmart and the Walmart or the Walton Foundation, Target and the Target Foundation. And so yes, you can be the owner of a for-profit and also have a nonprofit and they can collaborate. There's so many opportunities for that. For instance, let's say that you're a law firm and you have to turn away a low-income clients or prospective clients often but you could have your law firm, let's say that, that, that Celeste, you have the Celeste uh, Foundation and you have the Celeste Law Firm, okay? Right. So your foundation now, can, you can get grants to serve those low-income individuals. You can have a job, a, a law job training program allowing young people to work in your law firm and grants are covering that job training program. 
It's, uh, it's also helping them to learn how to work on live cases. It's helping them to learn how to do research for cases and they're better prepared leading them into the legal field. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to do both? And, and well, that, that brings up a great thing that I was just thinking about when you thought, when you were talking about all that, typically in this area, AARP will do uh, low income tax returns for people. Well, with mm -hmm. COVID-19 this year, they were not there to do that for people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I had quite a few seniors come in here and um, I would either help them or we would direct them somewhere, but they didn't, they didn't make enough money to pay for those. So after seeing that this year, as you're talking, I'm thinking, now how can I help these people? So that's how I would go about doing it then. Absolutely. I would set up a nonprofit Absolutely. for the company. Okay. Yes. And all year long, you could be teaching financial literacy. Right. and helping come to companies to even be, get prepared for tax season and how do they run their organizations more effectively i mean there's so many opportunities and you could you could be training individuals that want to go into the kind of business that you're in now it's entrepreneurial development it gives you employees extra employees while they're getting on the job training wow you know? okay you, yeah because that that was it was heartbreaking for me this year because um I was by myself and I just couldn't do it, everything. And I was scared to hire yes. anybody because of COVID-19. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. I had several, you know, people on social security. That's all they had. I just did it. I felt I, you would, I can't turn them away. And you see, know? that's what folks like to see. They like to see that you're going to do it anyway. And funders like to be like to be on a moving train or come and help with the moving train. So they would see when, when you're going after a grant and you would show what you're what you've already be do, been doing. Let's say that during you, you would say something like during the tax season of 2020, there were there were a minimum of 30 seniors that needed accounting services that could not afford our services. So actually you gave in kind. So right. let's say for, the, for, them to, for you to work with them, it would have been $500 but you only charge them 50, if any, or $100. Then you gave $400 in in-kind. And it's important to track that because that's what gets you your additional funding for next uh, year to be prepared for that. Okay. Well, you know, that's what I was, Sarah and I have a money mastermind group where we teach literacy and we teach financial um, literacy to, to, to women entrepreneurs, basically, as well uh -huh. as, you know, Sarah does uh, a lot of charitable work for nonprofits where she'll keep the books. Um, I do a lot of charitable work for nonprofits where I help them grow their business. And, um, and this is something, you know, as, as Sharita is talking about, Sarah, that yeah. my the wheels- light bulbs have, are going off. Well, well, the light bulbs have been going off on me for a long time, but I've been trying, I've been sharing with you guys but this is the big picture and this is what's exciting because Sharita can talk about the big picture way better than I can when it comes to the grant writing and for-profit and non-profit. So I appreciate you sharing you know, that. Yes, see, we're, I'm already writing to go after grants to cover me putting the cabins here for women's retreats, artist retreats, you know, um, to have youth come up and expose them to this and opportunities for, you know, camp campsites and that kind of thing see again it's all about not it's, it's bigger than you see the way the way that we are designed it is the law that um the law of attraction the law whether you say it's god whether it's the universe or whatever when you are doing something that you love it is impossible for you to not help someone else Absolutely. a perfect example is a bus driver if he's driving that bus and if he loves it Miss Jones could be back there on seat number 20 asleep and she's his regular customer. And he knows that when she gets off work, she's tired. Do you, but, but when he starts getting close to her stop, what's he gonna do? Hey, Joe, make sure you nudge Miss Jones and let her know I'm coming up on her stop because he cares. And he cares about who is riding his bus and he's gotten to know them. If he doesn't care, he's that guy that he looks and he's like, mm -hmm, she know her stop is coming. I don't know why she get on here and go to sleep. He's gonna drive right by it. See. When you love what you do, you care about the people also that are around you and you touch their lives in no matter what way it is. So that's why I'm saying from being a bus driver to a rock collector, whatever it is, you're going to touch someone's life doing it. And that's why I like to guide people and help them do what is your passion? 
What do you love? And I guarantee you that there's, there's profit for your passion. But along with that, I tell people, with faith comes finance. You've got to have faith that whatever is put in you was put there for a reason. Um, uh, Celeste, you've heard less, and, and I'm sure that, Sarah, you've probably heard less Brown too. And, and there's something that he said that stuck with me. You know, a lot of times people don't realize how wonderful they are and how great they are. And Les said, out of the millions, you got to think about it like this when it comes to yourself. Out of the millions of sperm cells, the millions, you made it. If you don't think you're special after thinking about it in those terms, something's wrong. Okay. And so when you have a passion, when you have something in you that's burning in you, and that's why I encourage people, don't go after what's hot right now in the industry or whatever. Go after what's burning in you. you. What is uh, hot in you? And that's what I want to help you to move that forward. Because I've been doing this. I've been in this arena since 1988. I started my own company in 94. And in coaching my clients and showing them how they can operate in exactly what they love. It could be trimming bonsai trees. It could be collecting buttons. It could be that you want to teach law or you're into metaphysics, whatever it is, I guarantee you that if you follow that, the doors that will open, the lives that you would touch and the, and the excitement that you feel about life will totally change. Yeah, you've, you, you've put a lot of uh, thoughts in my brain already. So I hope you're not busy in the next few, well, after vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going anyway? You're going to the uh, beach. St. George Island. It's a small island um, in the Gulf of Mexico in Florida. I picked that okay. because if COVID was 19, not a lot of people go there. So all uh -huh. you people don't go because I'll be there the next two weeks. Now tell me this. Without a doubt, there are some small businesses that would need you, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do you know that I never hardly travel anywhere without planning a speaking engagement or something and your nonprofit will cover your cost for you going? Yep. Yeah. See, something else she's taught me. How long we've been here? Not long. And I've yeah. learned it a lot. Well, see, even when I go home to my hometown, that's why I have, I have, it's called, it's called the Grant Cafe. The last trip that I took to Kansas City where I was going to be there, I, I contacted a local coffee shop and I did two workshops. When I went to Chicago, I did a grant cafe. And, and yeah, I said, come have coffee with me and let's have conversation. Because when you love what you do, you incorporate it into everything that you do. I just yes. have to be careful where I, I wear my husband out with it, you know? <laughs> well, uh, let me ask you something. Did you coin that name Grant Cafe? Because I really like that for a yeah, workshop. I like that. Yeah. I'm, I like that for a workshop, Sharita. Uh, well, well, I have the domain, okay. and uh, so I'm looking. I'm looking at actually, um, hopefully, getting it uh, trademarked really soon. But yes, I have the domain, and uh, all right, uh, that's perfect. I, I truly, and so, and the reason why I, I named it that is anywhere I go, I have coffee, right? And yeah. there's and there's a coffee shop somewhere, and 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 the the goal is to also to choose an offbeat coffee shop yeah so that i can expose more community to them because again anything that i do i want to empower i want to help small businesses i want community to start collaborating and so any and everything that i do that's 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 the goal you know right. you guys just like being here i tell people your nonprofit should transition with you and whatever you're doing in your life even though people know me as grant writing strategic planning economic development they see me now and they're like sharita you're, you're green acres. And I see you guys, this is what I've always been. I mean, I love this. I just have been waiting on the opportunity, but what am I going to do? I'm going to do grant retreats here. I'm going to do women's empowerment here. I'm, I'm going to empower youth. I'm going to collaborate with organizations and bring them into the fold. Everything well, me, that you do can let, happen. Yeah. Let me ask you something, Sharita. Talking about Homestead, and I'm getting a lot, little off base here, but it, the light bulb just came on. When you have property like that, and you want to turn something in it. Say you have 12, 13 acres. Is there an amount of acreage that you have to have before you can write for grants for it? No, no. Not at all? See, you can write for a grant teaching something out of your house. I helped a pastor and his wife, they do tutoring classes at home. And they ended up getting a $20,000 grant to help boost their 
after school program. And then following that, then we got them funding through Walmart. They got 200 backpacks donated, full of school supplies because they did a community backpack giveaway. They're in line now to get a larger grant. No, anything that you love or anything that you're wanting to focus on can start from right where you are. Okay. And, and think about all these kids that um, are now at home having to do digital learning and you know families are having to combine because parents have to work what another great yes. idea yeah well yeah you, you see a lot yes. of people now where the daycares are offering you bring your kid here and they're gonna supervise the online school thing you have churches that are offering that and they're you're paying them a hundred hundred fifty dollars a week for your kid to go there to to do their online school because of the parents that have to work and i promise you there's a grant for that. <laughs> Absolutely. And look, look at all the low-income families that, that don't have internet. So right. there's funding. If someone wants to be able to be, like I was just coaching someone earlier, and I was saying to him, suppose that you, with, with your, with, you, you get this internet bus and you can pull up in certain communities and you sit there for hours and kids can even be in their home, but now they can connect to your internet and they have access. You can even uh, get uh, Chromebooks or whatever is needed and give them out. Yeah. And through collaborations with local churches or whatever that are in those communities, now you can get funding for those Chromebooks. You guys, do you know that following the depression, more millionaires came out of the 1930s, mm -hmm. 20s and 30s depression than ever before in recorded history. Why? Because individuals looked at what gaps need to be filled. And that's why when I'm training clients now, I say, look at what gaps need to be filled. You know, there's one young lady and she got uh, furloughed from her job, but she loved making lasagna. And I saw her on the news and now she has an entirely new business, business making lasagna. And she just started making it and delivering it for free. But I, I reached out and I'm trying to contact her because I'm like, there's a grant for that. You know? <laughs> And you can have a culinary arts program and have other individuals uh, making making it with you and teaching them a recipe and you, you know there's so much it, it's like it's like tentacles that just keeps breaking out and going out this way and that way you know and so uh, the, my goal is to get people excited about it how can i help you get excited about what's in you and then guess what there's a grant for that you know and so it's been so long since people have been excited about something within them They've gotten That's so true. caught up in working. You know that statistics show that 85% of individuals across the globe hate what they do all day, every day for eight and nine hours. Mm. And then we wonder why we have domestic violence, substance abuse, child abuse, depression, high suicide rate. When Once people are doing what they love, they forget to eat. <laughs> have you ever been excited <laughs> about something and you look around and the day is past, you're like, did I eat? So all oh time. yeah, all the I time. just ate lunch, yep. <laughs> yes, yes. And the goal is to get people excited again about what is hot or what can be hot or what's been burning in them that they've been squashing. You know, well, all of well, us. Have... Go, mm -hmm. ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna well, say, just... what the passion you're talking about, the problem is, is that a lot of people just don't know where to start. And we're gonna get to that. We're gonna dive into that a little in a little bit here. But I think, you know, okay people don't understand enough about grants or they feel that they haven't been established long enough to apply for a grant. They just don't know what they don't know how to get there. They don't have a roadmap. They don't know the process. And, you know, I could go on and on. And, you know, the other thing, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into this because I don't want to get the cart before the horse or, or anything, but, you know, there's, there's a process that you also have to do that when you start a, a nonprofit, that you have to have good business practices. You have to have, you know, bookkeeping and have your books set up because you're going to have to do a process that says all that. And some people don't pay attention to the details and then they have to give these details for the grants. So Sarah and I, what we teach is very important. What starts out wrong ends up wrong. What starts out right ends up right. You have to start it out right and you got to pay attention to the detail. And yes, you do have to, you know, I don't care if you make $1 profit, get your PL statement this month that says that's what you had one dollar profit but you know have that PL statement moving forward and uh, yeah. 
and tracking what you do and track those in-kind sponsorships and, and track the time that you're putting in and what you're doing. And, and that's probably one of the biggest things, Sarah, that you and I've talked to a lot of these nonprofits about is, is you know, setting it up right from the get-go and then tracking that stuff and keeping yeah, and good they records. Need, they need to know the numbers for their tax returns too. Like how many hours does your president and your vice president and all those different people, how, how many hours a week are they spending in that nonprofit? That's part of a tax return. And a lot yes, of people see, don't realize that. The thing is, you're tracking that whether you're a for-profit or a nonprofit. But people think that you have more tracking in the nonprofit arena than the for-profit. No. no. If you are tracking your business and, and uh, so, that, so that you know what it takes to actually run your business, you're doing that whether you're for-profit or nonprofit. It's just in the nonprofit arena, when, when, like when, um, if you've got six volunteers, you still want to show, let's say that those volunteers will be making $10 an hour and you have six volunteers a day. So six times 10 <clears throat> is $60, right? right? And then if they're, right. and, and let's say that they're working six hours, then that's $360 a day that you've got in in-kind that people are giving to you, okay? Now, when you're not tracking that, you're really not looking at what it takes to run your business because those volunteers are doing a service. They're doing right. a job. Yes. And if, if they weren't volunteering, you would have to fill that with someone. So if you're not tracking that, you really don't know what it takes to actually run your business on a daily basis. So not only does it show you how to accurately uh, forecast your business expenses and what it would take, let's say that next year you've got to pay for that. So you're getting ready to write a grant. By just looking at the income you've received, you know, what, you know exactly what amount now you need to ask for to fill that gap and now that, uh, that you've got to pay the individuals. So there's so many reasons to track, um, but most people that have stepped into this arena, once they see how to operate, they realize, Sharita, if I would have, I thought that you had so much more reporting. I thought that you had to keep sending something to the IRS. No, you do your taxes annually. You, you, um, you, you, now, if you've gotten grant funding, a grant funder may want you to report to them on a quarterly basis. They've got, it's, and some people have looked at it and said, is this all? So if you've gotten 500,000, maybe quarterly, they're, they're, they send you this, you got this sheet that says, how much did you spend here? What employees have been involved? How many, how many people have you impacted as far as what, who were in your program? Was it 100? Was it 60? They're basing it off of what you sent, remember, and said that you plan to work with maybe 100 youth a month in leadership development, a reading, uh, um, and improving their, their literacy scores or whatever. So then when you're reporting back, maybe you, you might look and say, we, our goal was to work with 100 youth, but now because of COVID-19, we actually are tutoring 300, 300. youth virtually. Mm -hmm. But we're utilizing the same staff, able to pay those staff to do that. You know, so you, you've got a lot of the same costs, but with COVID-19, you're impacting more youth. Absolutely. Instead of only a space for 100 in the space that you had. So it's just about, like you guys said, and, and that's where your services would come in so handy because there, there may be some small businesses or nonprofits that normally could not afford you, where now right. you can go after dollars, cover your consulting costs so that now you can work with those individuals. Absolutely. So I always tell people, think of it like this. Think of this long hallway. And you're just looking at revenue of what's at the end at that door. But as you're walking down this long hallway, there are windows that are at eye level. And there's people waving saying they would like to come in and walk with you, but they can't afford you. And there's a door every so many feet along those walls. Well, now as you get grants, you can open up that door and pull in those individuals. And now you can work with them. You're going a little bit further and you can pull in a few more people because your nonprofit should first walk with you on the exact path that you are on, no matter what it is that you're doing, because I guarantee you that there are people that need you that could not afford you. And now you can get grants to cover those costs, to pay you. See, the charity is not you working for free. The charity is you being able to give or work with some individuals that you otherwise would not have worked with, and it pays you to do it. So you've got individuals that are here that can't work with you. You've got individuals here that can because they can afford you. 
what the grants do is it evens the playing field. It bridges the gap, bridges the gap. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, let me ask you something. Can a nonprofit be an arm under, uh, say, uh, my for-profit company? It can't be an arm. It has to be a separate entity. The IRS has to know who to tax and who not to tax. But you can collaborate. So for instance, uh, let's say that you're sitting right there in your office okay. and you've got, got 2,000 square feet. And now you develop your foundation. Your foundation can lease an office from you. You can have a job training program that works right there. And so now you're nonprofit and because of the individuals that you're bringing in to work with you, it start taking up more space. Your nonprofit can lease that amount of space from, from your building. Okay. Okay. So there's so many ways for your for-profit and nonprofit to collaborate. But see, this is where people get in trouble because they're working with one organization that's theirs and, and another, then you start double dipping. So let's say that Celeste, you've got books sitting there in your inventory and they're books that you've written and your nonprofit can buy those books from you for the different programs that you have under your nonprofit. But let's say that you've gotten grants to buy those books, then you get those books and you start selling them under your nonprofit too. So you're double dipping there. Double dipping. And then you're working in your for-profit over here, but you're paying yourself a full-time salary under your nonprofit. But how are you working full-time if, you, if you're working part of the time in your for-profit and then part of the time in your nonprofit? Right. So just be honest in your actions, you know, and when you're honest in your actions, you won't have to worry at all. Well, and Sarah, from a CPA standpoint, you know, you, you have any words or words of wisdom on that? You don't co-mingle. I mean, That's right. you, you, you just don't co-mingle anything, right? You keep it separate. You got two sets of books. And like yes. you said, the nonprofit can buy the books, but they got to give away the books, right? Yes. You, you yes. just, you don't co-mingle. You know, and that's really that easy. And it's one of those things in the workshops that we presented here, Sharita, for the nonprofit industry that Sarah and I have done, you know, that is something that we have just really spoke to the cows come home about don't co-mingle your stuff. It's separate <laughs> and you have to keep it separate. And, and sometimes people just don't get it, do they, Sarah? Well, in, in, and I will say in the beginning of a new business or a new nonprofit, uh, oh, I just, you know, this, I just need to use this debit card one time because I might, have, I don't have any cash over here or and it, it happens so quickly and so, and, and not in a bad way, but what you need to do is, you know, write yourself a check or keep it legal, right? And keep it separate, yeah. but it happens so easily in the beginning when one situation where there's no money. Yeah, Just, and see, yeah. the thing is, it, the same thing in the for-profit arena. Let's say that yes. you've gotten an investor for 300000 to start your non, your for-profit. Right. Well, you don't want to co-mingle that with your personal life. No. You, no. you do not want to use some of that investor's money, and now you're paying your house note. Right. Or, right. you know, or you and your family are getting ready to go on vacation, and you say, you know what, I'm just going to take 10000 from here, and we'll pay it back when we get back. The co-mingling shouldn't happen, right. whether it's the for-profit or non-profit. Absolutely. But see, people always think it's different than the for-profit arena. It, you know, now, if, even, even when you have invested your own money in your for-profit, and, and I'm sure that, 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 that you can vouch for this, if I've invested money in my for-profit and I want to get it paid back, I need to have some documentation that I Alone. am loaning, loaning it. to my company. Exactly. Yep, that's right. You can do the same thing in the nonprofit arena. You can loan money to your nonprofit, but let's say that financially, personally, you start doing well and you don't want to get that money back. You can actually do it as now turn, you can change the paperwork mm -hmm. and say that you want it to be a contribution you to should. your nonprofit. Yeah. Now yeah. it's a write off. So it depends on what's going on in your personal life, your finances, on how you decide that you want to do it. But bookkeeping and tracking and co-mingling or not co-mingling, it, it, it is a corporation. A nonprofit is a corporation. It's a Must third entity. It's a third entity. It's separate. It's separate. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Well, you know, and, and I want to I want to make a statement here because we are live on, on, on the radio and live streaming um, on Facebook and we have a moral obligation to do this, Sarah, especially with you as a CPA. You know, even with this COVID-19 and the PPP and all this money, you know, again, you and I just had breakfast uh, uh, this last week and we talked about this, is this money that you're getting from the government during COVID-19, it doesn't go into your personal account. It goes, you know, and Sarah has said the, said the best thing is you take that money and you put open up a brand new account that it came from COVID-19 and you don't put it in your personal account, you don't put it in your business account, you open up a separate account because now all the accounting is strictly going to come from that account. If you put it in your business account or your personal account, you've mingled it, you've done this, you've done that, you got, you're going to have a whole can of worms here and it's coming because they're going to, they're going to come back and track you. So, you know, with this COVID-19 uh -huh. stuff. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. you know, Sarah, would you please tell our audience what they should be doing with any of this money? You should always separate, set up a separate bank account, whether it's a different bank or all that, it does not matter. But we want a good audit trail. Why? Because there's PPP forgiveness, payroll protection plan forgiveness. And if you don't have a good audit, you don't have a good audit plan, you're not going to get that money forgiven. Um, granted, it's only a 1% interest over five years now. But still, you want to have it forgiven in the best possible way. You, you don't want any questions. So when you, you have that money deposited yeah. there, then you have paperwork for every penny you take out of that account. Why did you mm -hmm. pay this? What was it for? But you keep yeah. that separate. You, you, once you're ready to spend it, you've got the paperwork. You transfer the exact amount from that account to your operating account, and you pay the bills, whether it be payroll, operations, rent, utilities, whatever those funds are being used for. And, you know, you just got to think about this in a logical way. So whenever you come in there audited or have to do the forgiveness, it's all in black and white right there. Yeah, you don't have to go dig up. You don't have to pay a CPA to go figure this out That's for right. you. And, you know, again, what starts out wrong ends up wrong. What starts out right ends up right. But I wanted us to make that statement, Sarah, uh, for the radio show because we do a for-profit on the first Tuesday of the, of, the, of the month and then on the third Tuesday of the month we do non-profit. So this is our non-profit oh. segment here today. Um, Let's go ahead. So did, did you know uh, that that's for your radio show? Well I'm sure Miss Penny Rogers, our, our, our gracious host, would love to know more about that. Uh, because she is the founder of WCEG Talk Radio, and by the grace of God and her and her uh, committee, they put the show together for Sarah and I, the Global Legacy Wealth Building, and we are honored and privileged to be here and serve, aren't we, Sarah? That's correct. And it's we, amazing people we, like them that's helped us, help, help us. other people. Yeah. And, and the guests that we, we started this in May, Sharita, um, again, the first Tuesday is for-profit. The third Tuesday of the month is non-profit. We've had some phenomenal speakers on the show uh -huh. in, in the last four uh -huh. months, that's for sure, just like yourself. So now, is there a link that I can send people to where they can see your past shows? <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, and we, we will give that to you. It's uh, WCEG Talk Radio. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, and on it's at YouTube, and so it's you can go YouTube to the channel. YouTube channel and um, WCEG Network YouTube. That's where the, the live streaming is. Let me ask you another question. We always hear talk about government grants. Is this the only resource for grants? No, no, there's so much other money. Matter of fact, if someone is new to the grants arena, the nonprofit arena, I discourage them in going after government grants because there's just a lot more, more paperwork. And government grants is one of the reasons why a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth about grants in the nonprofit arena, because that's their only experience. And they saw that and it's, um, because it's a lot of the reason why there's so much paperwork is because of how the, the grant came about. Maybe it was because of a tax or something like that. And so it went through the house, went through the Senate or whichever way it goes, right? And each one has their paperwork in there about why the grant came about, 
what, why, what was the tax, you know, when was it voted on and all that stuff is in there. And then you've got to get your SAMHSA, your DB, your, your DUNS number, your, you've got to get all these different registrations. And so when people are new and they've got to go through all those hoops, it can be very daunting. And so when you go after funding, like for a target grant, you know, uh, uh, speaking of Target, most people aren't aware that Target gives four to four, four to five million dollars a week in grant funding. We, and, I, uh, I, yeah. I am aware and, of that, uh, of, of that, yeah. Sarita, and and I didn't know this, but we were doing a service project here in Atlanta uh, when we were doing um, Wellspring Living and refurbishing five safe houses, and. I'm not afraid to go ask anybody for money and in-kind sponsorships and stuff like that. I'm, I'm the queen of sponsorship here in Atlanta. You may be the queen of grant writing. I'm the queen of sponsorship. Yeah. And, but I, so I went to Target and I went in there and I just talked to them. I had, you know, I had our information. I had our letter. I had all of our, you know, what we were doing, our service project. And they told us that the, each store gives away, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's like each store can give away $500 a week um, at, at their location uh, for, you know, Sponsor community, yes. sponsorships, $500 yes. a week. Now, we, you know, you have to file some paperwork, this or that, but we needed it like right then and there. But what they did is they gave me like $100 and because we were, we were, wanting to do linens and, and, and bed sheets and stuff like that for the safe houses. And so, you know, we went in there and I think I got the pillows and, and towels and washcloths and stuff like that. So you got but, an in-kind, you got in-kind donations also. Absolutely. But, but that's where I learned about the, they told me about Target that they give away all that money, like you said, and they said their store gives away $500 a week, you know, and that also that you can apply for more. So a lot of people yes. didn't know yeah. that. But tell yes. us more about Target. That, that was my experience. Yeah. And see, a lot of people don't understand the difference between a sponsorship and a grant. See, you can walk in and get that sponsorship, that $500 or $100, or like I talked about, Walmart giving the backpacks, and they gave that organization $1,500 cash. But then they also give grants and grants. Sponsorships are for short term, those quick projects. Right. Grants are for the long term right. projects. And so and when someone asks, what is the difference? That's the main difference in those. But yes, there's so much other money besides government funding. Uh, again, it is a trillion dollar industry. Your audience can also go to go to the giving pledge dot org. Giving pledge 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 dot org. Dot org givingpledge.org. That's where Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, Ted Turner, um, um, uh, over 200 billionaires have signed a pledge that they're giving 50 to 90% of their wealth away. From now on, that's added over 900 billion annually to the nonprofit arena, to the nonprofit industry. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. You know, the other reason I love this arena, I don't care whether you are a big name celebrity, athlete, a global leader, or like a young man that I worked with that was fresh out of prison. When you step into this arena, everyone's on the same footing. You are your only limitation in how you can operate in this arena and the goals and the opportunities that exist and the lives that you can touch. You know. Uh, there's no judgment. There's there's just opportunity for you to make a difference in someone's life. It it is open doors for individuals that couldn't even find a, a good living wage job, but they could start a nonprofit and, and touch lives. And like when I was working with the men out of the prison, I was teaching at Chino, the large, largest prison in California, or one of them. And we helped reduce that recidivism rate by 75%. Because wow. see, nobody wants to live in a cage. But when you show individuals that they can get out and they can do something else and things that they're passionate about, you guys, it was un it was unbelievable the talent that I saw in the men in that in that prison. One of the guys, he he should get STEM funding. This guy out of gum wrappers, like the juicy fruit gum wrappers mm -hmm. or whatever, you guys, he had made a whale. It was about this big, and it was an actual whale, like a bucket whale. But you guys, he had a bucket. And it could swing. That's oh, engineering. Wow. But look at the mind that this guy had. Okay. And so 
But a lot of times people have just, when you're living in your bubble of, of the environment that you're in and there's a lot of negativity and, and what people don't realize is when you are continuously in a low income community, See, they're finding that PTSD is, is a continual long-term something traumatic in your life. Think of what people are going through in a low-income community with constant sirens and gunshots and, and wondering where their next meal is going to come from, uh, people breaking into their homes, kids uh, in some communities, it is a norm to step over a dead body on your stairwell. You know, hmm. your brother has been killed and then the few years later, your uncle's killed. And, and so you're, a lot of kids don't experience death until they're, uh, someone old in their family dies. But when you're coming from a community where there's constant death and crime and drugs and, and uh, a food desert, you're dealing with PTSD, so many. And so when, in working with these guys in the prison, many of them, where they ended up where they are because of the traumatic experiences that they grew up in from childhood, from infancy. But right. when you can expose them to something else, see, nobody wants to live in a cage. And when you find a way to touch their soul and, and allow them to operate in that, they won't go back. Now, let me give you a perfect example of just giving someone access that they didn't even know they had access. Think of AAA, right? Yeah. You've got individuals, low-income individuals that push their car on a daily basis when it breaks down. But they're wearing $300 tennis shoes that they will have a fit if somebody steps on those shoes. And they're pushing their car because they don't even know that they have access to AAA. In their mind, they're thinking that only rich people could have that service that comes and picks up your car and tows you or gives you a jump or whatever. The moment they find out that AAA is only is, is $55 or less than $100, depending on your plan, they will never push their car again. What I'm saying to you is this, this arena allows people to have access. And once you have access and you experience something that feels right, that touches your soul, that will pay you to do things and make a difference in your life and someone else's life, you won't go back. That's true. And that's why I love this arena so much. You know, I, I, I you know, it, every day is new. Every day gives me a thrill to see the, the, that someone else's, their eyes dance you know, a bulb goes off in their head saying, you mean I can do that? Yes. And there's a grant for that. There's a grant for that. <laughs> I love that. That and the Grant Cafe, those are two of my new, I love that. Yeah, I love that Grant Cafe, man. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, what about, so we've got, we know there's grants out there. How much can an organization receive through a grant? Believe it or not, there's no limit. The, really? The, the largest single grant that I helped secure was 14 million. Wow. You guys, even, see what most people don't realize, do you know that stimulus funding is grants? Do you know that the reason there is a dollar general all across this nation, sometimes two and three miles away from each other and in mostly lower income communities is because they, addre they, had, they addressed a need. They put their stores where there were food deserts and they did it with stimulus funding. Okay, but see, when you're a huge corporation, they call it stimulus funding. When you're a small organization or when you're a nonprofit, they call it a grant. Uh, you guys, what I'm saying is the funding is there to make a difference, to address a need. Just like a lot of these large corporations that are getting stimulus funding now. Now you can get mad about it if you want or whatever. But the thing is, is when these large corporations get the stimulus funding, are they keeping jobs going? Yes. yes. So all those individuals that work for that company that's getting that stimulus funding, are they mad? Okay. <laughs> so uh, there's always pros and cons. I'm not right. saying the good, the bad, the ugly. What I'm saying, I'm just explaining to you what it is. And, and stimulus funding comes about to address a need. Grants come about to address a need. That's why even if you're a bar, I'm saying a bar that serves liquor, if you have established yourself to help uh, starving musicians, you're, you're creating opportunities for musicians that are out of work. You're exposing individuals to jazz and keeping the jazz music alive. Fine. You're creating opportunities in a low income community and creating jobs there. Can you be a nonprofit? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but people have in their mind that a nonprofit can't sell liquor. Do you know that in a lot of states, in order to get a liquor license, you have to do it through a nonprofit? See, huh, people, 
upset about things, but they don't understand the inner workings and how the nonprofit arena helps the, the, the GDP, the, the economic engine, which is what makes America great. Well, abs absolutely. And you know, you were talking about the stimulus check. Uh, and again, I just want to, I want us to go on, on, on record here, Sarah, and, as well as Sharita. You know, this money, the stimulus money that these corporations took, and you can, have, there's pros and cons and people, companies took it, this or that. They were able to keep people employed. They were able, they were able to keep them employed for up to six months. After six months, it didn't matter. They can let them go. True, Sarah? Oh, they could have let them go from day one. They just may not have been completely forgiven for the whole, whole loan. Thing. And, and, it, and I'm in, I've read a couple articles on this and it makes a lot of good points. You need to look at that money in whole and how's the best way to serve that corporation. It may be best to let two or three of those people go because that you may be able to stay in business a year longer without yeah, any additional stretch. funding. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, so. you guys, wouldn't you say that the checks that all these people are getting, these smaller checks are stimulus? Yes, absolutely. Yes. It's, it's stimulus either way. But see, we, we, we like it when we get it, but right. we don't like it when, when a big corporation gets it. And again, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to promote yay or nay about how somebody feels, political agenda or whatever. All I'm doing is explaining it. And, and a lot of times we don't like something unless we're getting it, but then when we get it, just like people say, well, I don't like, you know, uh, that they're the nonprofit arena and it's nothing but a handout until you get your social security check <laughs> or until you, get your, until you get your stimulus funding or, <laughs> stimulus. You know, or, people say, or people, you know, they say, I don't like nonprofit. They're always asking for money. You guys, what business doesn't ask for money? The Everything. moment you walk in the store, before you walk out, if you've got something in your hand, what are they asking you for? Money. It's just that non, the nonprofit arena, because the services that they're offering are not tangible like that. Right. People say, well, when you're asking for money or if you're getting a contribution or whatever, it's a handout. But if you're a for-profit restaurant and you're getting money, you don't call it a restaurant, a, a handout. Right. Yeah. It, it, and one of the things I did with all my clients after the pandemic started was, okay, tell me your situation. What's going on in your family life? What's going on in your business? How can we use the available funds or the, the, the services that are out there right now to benefit you the most? Because mm -hmm. a lot of these people have no control if they lost their job or if the business that they worked for shut down for three months or four months, whatever, they had no control over that. That's when you don't feel guilty about using it. Use it. Do what's mm -hmm. best for you and your family and you and your business because that's what it's all about. It's to stimulate yes. the economy. And if that's one way we stimulate the economy, more power to us. Absolutely. Yes. And see, even, even in talking about those large corporations, yes, they could lay off some employees after getting that money, but couldn't the small restaurants and the uh, small businesses that get that money and they lay off, could, I mean, they could do the same thing. They could do the same thing, yes. All, all I'm saying is people have to look at the entire picture and look at it right. fairly that what, what is good for the large corporations also is good and can happen in the small. It's just, how are you going to manage your business? Understand it, understand your do's and don'ts, you know, know what's available for you. And, and that's all I'm saying as far as the nonprofit arena also. See, I, I, I say that people, I call it the stepchild of business. People wanna put less into it, but they expect so much more out of it. Well, and, and that, and, that's, that's, a true, that's a true statement, Sharita. So let's, let's look at it this way. You know, you have families that maybe one spouse works for a corporation and maybe the other spouse is a small entrepreneur, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and the one that works for the corporation makes, makes very, very good money. And the, and the entrepreneur spouse, you know, does okay. But the thing of it is, is that that smaller entrepreneur, they file taxes together or whatever, but because of that small entrepreneur, that average business right there, it's gonna save that, that family thousands of dollars in paying taxes because of what they did and their overhead yeah. and their expenses that, you know, where had you not had that, 
the big corporation person over here and you didn't have the, the entrepreneur here, you would be writing a big check to Uncle Sam in addition to the right. money that they already took from you. Yeah, so does yeah. that does that entrepreneur cost you know costing you money? No, it's saving you. Whatever you would normally write that check to the IRS, I would much rather put it into supporting your spouse and their business as opposed to writing a check to the IRS. There. And the same thing, similar like um, if you have a for profit and a non profit, and let's say that you have an absolute. Now you guys stop me if I'm wrong. Okay, let's say that you have an absolutely phenomenal year in your for-profit and you make 75,000 more than, than what you normally would and you know you're gonna be taxed, but you have a nonprofit. You can donate that 75,000 to your nonprofit and get a major write-off oh, instead yep. of having all of these taxes on you. Exactly. And in and 2020, and you get a larger write-off than you normally do. Uh-huh. And, but see, uh, it's hard for people to see that. But once they see it, and what I'm saying is, once you understand that, there's so many more things that you can do because you're in control of your nonprofit. You're not creating it to benefit just you and your family. You're creating it to make a difference in lives that need to be touched. And now that major contribution from yourself even, grant funders even like to see that. They like to not only see your sweat equity, they like to see that you have been a contributor to your organization, whether it is actually monetary or your in kind. So if you are volunteering and working for your company because revenue has not come in yet, track your hours because you're probably putting in 75,000 in billable uh, uh, in kind. Yes. Okay. But see, if you're not tracking it, then you can't talk about it in your grant proposal. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and we have I so much more. Right? We got so much more to cover, Sarita. Don't you go nowhere because we have a lot more to cover. But what I want to do right this minute is I want to take a break. And when I say a break, I want you to tell our audience how they can get a hold of you, your name, your website, your phone number, your email, any information you want to give the community of how they can reach out to you if they would like to have a conversation with you or to learn more or take a workshop, whatever it is you have to offer. This is our time. We want to promote you right this minute. They can go to my website. It's Philanthropy Alliance, P-H-I-L-A-N-T-H-R-O-P-Y, Alliance, A-L-L-I-A-N-C-E. So it's philanthropyalliance.org. And if you missed how to spell it, just look up how to spell philanthropy, look up how to spell alliance. And go there and go to where it says sign me up get on my database because we send out free grant information weekly i send out different kinds of tips about for-profit non-profit collaboration and anything else that to help advance where you uh the direction that you would like to go now my my facebook sharita oglesby is full but they can go to sharita herring making a difference sharita herring making a difference on facebook and and just stay connected so and thank you for that ladies um for that me being able to give that little plug oh absolutely and do you have any workshops or anything coming up right now sharita i'm actually in the middle of one right now uh, i offer a grant writing series it's a six-week series two hours a week and at the end of the six weeks your grant proposal is written and you get a list of grant funders. We identify funders that are specific to your programs and services. I also am in the middle of my nonprofit development class. Some people, instead of paying us to do their nonprofit, they, they want to, it's more, it may be more cost effective for them to take the class. It's a six week class also. And um, so we're in class number four already of the grant class and class, um, well, no, a uh, class of number four of the nonprofit class. Our next grant class starts this Wednesday. I'm sorry, I just ended one, but the next one starts this Wednesday, and it's from 12 to 2. Um, it's I. They're during the day now because so many people are at home, but normally they would be in the evenings. Right. And uh, but again, if they're on my database, they will get any of the upcoming classes. I do a lot of free. I recently did a free workshop called Introduction to Nonprofit Management. And so, and we had people on from all over the world, from Paris to Pittsburgh. And um, so just join me. So if they go to your website at philanthropyalliance.com, is that right? Or dot, dot org. Dot org. Dot org they can see the different workshops and things that you have there or register on, online there? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, there's a tab that says sign me up. 
where they get on, they can get on the database, but also they can see the different classes, they can see the details of what each class offers. And now, uh, again, like you said in my bio, we've developed over 600 nonprofits. Now, people will complain and say, well, I hear that it takes a year, two years. Ladies, we've got nonprofits approved in 12 business days, 18 business days. We just turned a, an entire restaurant in the heart of Chicago in November 2019. We turned that we uh, got the nonprofit status for that restaurant in 43 business days. So the reason why what people don't tell you when they talk about how long it took to get their nonprofit is that the IRS kept rejecting their paperwork. And that's why it took so long. long but yeah. an IRS rep does not just have that paperwork sitting on the desk all that time and then decide to work on your documents. That's not how that goes. No, abs okay. absolutely. And for our listeners here tonight, I highly encourage you to go over to Sharita's website at philanthropyalliance.org, sign up to get her newsletter. I mean, she's going to send you an email every week with all this information. I mean, this is the queen of grant writing and nonprofits and for profits. And you know, as well as I do, that Sarah and I, we don't bring anything except extreme value to WCEG Talk Radio. So make sure you go over there and sign up at Sharita's. Also at this midpoint, I wanna say that you're listening to the new WCEG network on WCEGtalkradio.com. Watch us live on your smart TV, YouTube, WCEG network. And I am Celeste Giordano, your show host, along with Sarah Poe, our co-host. And of course, our guest here tonight is Sharita Herring Oglesby. And we are excited to work into the second power hour here. Really, we're into the second last qu uh, three quarters. Can a startup uh -huh. organization receive grants? Yes. Matter of fact, if, for those that are listening, if they just go to Google right now, type in grants, comma, seed money, seed money. See, there's seed money for startup organizations. Now, if, if, if you happen, let's say Celeste, you or Sarah, you see a grant that you want to go after and they say they only fund an organization that's been in existence for two years. Don't stop there. You can actually go up under the umbrella of an organization that's been in operation for two years. They serve as your fiscal agent or a, you know, um, a fiscal sponsor. And, and you can still go after that grant because a lot of funders will allow an organization to be what's called a pass-through organization, okay? Right. So don't get discouraged. So give us that, that link again. Uh, Penny, I know you're listening, so um, let's get that link for Penny. What is that link? <laughs> uh, uh, you, you mean as far as the search that they can do? Yes, the search, please. Uh, uh, grants comma, and the comma is just the separator. Grants comma space seed money. Now seed money. also put quotes around, around seed money. Put a quote in front of the S and a, and a quote at the at, at end of the Y. The quotes lock those two words together. You know how sometimes you can do a search on the internet and one word's up here and one's down mm -hmm. here and it didn't bring up what you want. Right. When you put quotes around it, it locks those words together. So it will, it will, specifically bring up what you're looking for. I didn't know that. I learned something tonight. Thank you, Sharita. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've talked a little bit uh, about this already, but you know, let's just say Celeste Nye's nonprofit, we get a, a government grant and you, you've talked a little bit about this. So if there's anything else you'd like to say, does that mean the government's going to control us? And you've talked some no. about that. I didn't know if there was anything else you wanted to talk about. Not at all. See, it, it even when you read their documents, because I just had an organization on and we were actually looking at the grant and it was saying, you know, that that um, that they cannot have any conflicts of interest with the organization. They do not control the organization. It says it in the documents. You're they're They're granting you the money off of what you said you wanted to do, not what they're telling you to do. OK, and I'm equating that to like. The, my barber giving me tax advice like they don't know that i'm a tax person and they're just giving me all this yeah. advice and i'm sitting there going what are you talking about so yeah. a lot of bad yeah. advice is out there yes that we it need is. to overcome yes. Okay. yes yes and there's there's so many um from you know the irs is going to try and control you 
don't go after any government grants or, uh, and I have people bragging, well, I haven't received any funding and I, I've been running. And then when I start talking to them, really, they're about to die. You know, they're, they're, they're not sustainable. And which is why they've called me, but then they're saying, but you know, we really haven't wanted to go after grants. And then I explained to them, you, do you realize the, the millions of dollars that go back every year untapped because so many people think that way. But how is the nonprofit arena the third largest business sector as far as creating jobs if these individuals are not getting paid? How is it a trillion dollar industry if, if, the not, if people have to work for free? Well, you know, uh -huh. that's just like, you know, for local uh, nonprofits or, or even for profits in, in your local community where you go to, let's say, State Farm or Coca-Cola, you know, they all, you know, like you have Walmart and Target, they all have X amount of dollars that they give away every year. And uh, there, there are a lot of people don't understand is that you really have to do your due diligence and your homework to learn this because you have to know when's the application deadline locally for these, these companies like State Farm and Coca-Cola, you know, and uh, what are they, you know, giving their money away? Because like State Farm, I remember a couple of years ago when we were, were going to apply for that and found out that they really only like to deal with people uh, and give their money away that had to deal with education. And, yes, you they're, know, they're, yes, each funder has their, their, their funding priorities. Yes. You might have some that want to give dollars for seniors, but they only want to cover mental health help, or, or helping seniors as far as their nutrition. So that's why you have to read the guidelines and you've got a funder over here and they only want to, but when you go to different funders, like I was teaching the grant class last night, the last session, and they were amazed because even when you receive the free grant info we send out, there's only so much I can put in the subject matter, in the subject line. But I, I always say, please open it because it might say senior funding for wellness, but then when you open it, they also fund for youth leadership, tutoring programs, uh, 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 you know, uh, after school fitness, you know, uh, combating uh, uh, obesity. They have all these other 20 priorities. Now, very seldom have I seen a funder that only funds for one thing, okay? Right. But then you still have to read the guidelines because even if they fund for youth sports, they still might say that they don't fund for travel teams, that right. they don't yeah. cover travel. So right. that's why it's important to read the guidelines. But again, all grant funders have different funding cycles because people will say, well, Sharita, how long does it take to get a grant? It depends on the funder. And they say, well, can you, can, can you guarantee me that I'll get a grant in three months? I always throw this question back. Is there anyone that can guarantee you that you'll get an investor in the for-profit in three months? Mm -hmm. You know, again, we ask things and expect things in the nonprofit arena that we wouldn't even consider okay. asking or expecting in the for-profit arena. Right. And that's why I say it's the stepchild of business because we put very little in. I had someone and we developed their nonprofit and I saw her a year or two later and I said, how's your nonprofit? Oh, Sharita, I'll let that thing go. You know, um, I, I submitted for a grant and didn't get it. And people told me I wouldn't get it. And I said, well, did you ever get that, those investors that you were trying to get when I met you at CEO Space? Now she had been coming to CEO Space regularly, trying to get investors. She had been trying to get investors for 10 years, but hadn't given up. But she submitted for one grant and gave up. Gave up. So what I'm saying is we expect more, but want to put in less. And in life period, you get out of anything what you put in. Put into it. Absolutely. Well, you know, with that question right there, Sharita, um, and I'm just referring into the local uh, market right now. So a lot of times there's deadlines that they have to have applications by a certain time frame. Uh, for them to make their decisions for next year or, or whatever it is. Uh, the, yes. other, the other thing is, is that a lot of the nonprofits don't realize that a lot of these companies don't use all their funding and they don't go back and research or don't go back and ask these companies by the end of the year in December. There's a lot of money sitting there in December that has no place to go with these companies like Coca-Cola or or State yeah. Farm, I'm using them, and the money's just sitting there. Yeah, and that's why I was saying there's, that there's millions of dollars that go back every year. 
untapped. Right. Because, because they, even even um, uh, Warren Buffett says the the easy thing is making the money. The hard thing is giving it away. See, because people don't know how to say what they're going to do with the dollars. And you know what, Mike, you guys, my alarm just went off. I forgot. Um, I thought I was going to be on an hour, but it's, it's an hour and a half. I, I'm on with a group in five minutes. And you know okay. what? I'm, I'm seeing how the sun is hitting my face. I keep trying to shift. You know, um, I'm sitting, like I said, I'm sitting here in the barn and uh, uh, this time of evening, the sun starts coming in. So I keep trying to shift because I know on the camera, it probably, does it look really crazy with the sun? No, you're, like, no, you're, no you're, you're, it's beautiful. I love the she oh, shed, by the way. Yes. Oh my well, gosh. Listen, well, we know that we, we have you. I just let you keep going because you were given a fabulous content, Sharita. We'd love to have you back on the show again. Uh, again, tell our audience how to get a hold of you because we're going to let you get right to where you need to go. Yes, uh, they can go to my website at philanthropyalliance.org. That's philanthropyalliance.org. And go and click on the tab that says sign me up so that you can get on my database. Now, you guys, before I go, let me just say something about philanthropy. All of us are philanthropists. You, look at what you've already been doing, Celeste. Sarah, look at what you do as far as to help uh, seniors. And I bet that you are not calling yourself a philanthropist. No. I bet when people go to your website, you do not have what, whatever your title is and all of that you do, author, uh, accountant, such and such, philanthropist. It should be there. There. That's, that's a good point. Because, yes, because that's who you are. And once you start wearing it, you guys, and once you have that on you, you're going to see that other things start coming. And people will see that you're a philanthropist and they'll think about you when there's opportunities that they want to collaborate with a nonprofit or they want to guide resources your way. But if they don't know, if you're not wearing it, if you're not saying it, and, and again, we are what we speak. When you start That's owning that you're a philanthropist, when you talk about how you're making a difference, when, you, when you're talking about instead of partnering that you're looking for collaborations, Patience. when you start using the language of this industry, the industry will pour into you, okay? Absolutely. So I want to thank you guys again for having me on. This has oh, been Thank you, Sharita. Our hearts love your hearts and thank you so much for your time. We will both be in touch with you and Sarah and I have a nonprofit and we, we would love to have a conversation with you. Uh, our audience, I'm sure they'll be reaching out to you and go to philanthropyalliance.org, sign up for uh, Sharita's newsletter, go spread your wealth and knowledge to another group. We love you. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Nice yes. to thank meet you. Thank you, D, for having me on. You guys are the best. All right. Thank Thanks. you. You are too. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wow, Sarah. Wow, that was amazing. I told you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. I mean, she's just such a wealth of information. I mean, I, I just picked up on quite a few tidbits here and there that, you know, it's good for us and our nonprofit and just good for my clients. And I'm, I'm just so excited about all that. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll get, I'll we'll get Sharita back on our show. And matter of fact, um, one of our, our, our monthly calls with uh, the women of community impact, I'm going to bring, we'll bring Sharita on board for a zoom call with that. She's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I encourage you if you're, if you're looking to start a nonprofit for profit, uh, take one of her classes. Uh, I promise you, you won't regret it. It will only make you money. That's for sure. And, you know, those that invest in themselves are those that are going to take that journey to the top. Yeah, because um, that grant writing thing will be, that would be great. She, she rattles that stuff off. Yeah. Sharita knows it. She knows it like the back of her hand. And she, you, she, you talk to her about something and those wheels are turning. You can yeah. see on the show, those wheels are turning. She's thinking and she knows exactly where to direct you. And um, she's just a real gemstone. So, 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 Sarah, let me ask you a couple of questions here. You know, because you're getting ready to go on vacation, which I'm jealous. You're going to the beach for two weeks um, it was tax season. And this was a question we were going to ask Sharita, but I'm going to ask you during these co coronavirus times, is there still funding available right now? Or is there anything that anybody needs to be doing? Or what are we looking at? Or what have you been reading or hearing? Well, you know, the, the Paycheck, Paycheck Protection Program 
is it's been stopped at the moment. So um, that could come back through another CARES Act through Congress, because I do believe there's still money there. Um, they're still processing some applications that were in the system. If you got in the system in time, your application will be processed. But will they open that back up for a third time? It's a good possibility. Um, the other thing is the EIDL, which is a economic disaster loan from the SBA. Um, there's a grant up to 10,000 that you can apply for. Um, I tell all my clients to do that. Then they have an actual loan after that that's 3.75 for 30 years. Um, it's based off your revenues and cost of goods and things like that. But what's it gonna hurt to apply for that? You could get it. You could put a little nest egg away so that you know you're going to survive through this until everything stabilizes and calms down. Um, you just go to sba.gov and go to the funding, COVID funding, and it's right there, the application process. The application is super easy. Um, it, it's, it's well worth the time to do it. Also, in Gwinnett County, here where we are, the counties had tremendous amount of, of funding for nonprofits, just for nonprofits. I, I saw that. I, I read that. 35, um, was it 35 million? Yeah. I mean, yeah, 35 huge million. amount of money. That, but see, that money also came from the government for counties to give to nonprofits so that these nonprofits could stay in business. Well, if it's helping people with cancer or after school kids or this is just a humongous area, the homeless, all different things. So go to your county and see what is offered. Uh, small yeah. business alliances are giving away money. Just Google your area in uh, nonprofit funding at the moment. You know, there's a LISC.org. It's Neighborhood Business Grants Local Initiatives Support Corporation. Applications open up today, the 18th, and it closes the 23rd. And, and again, this thing with Gwinnett County, I think they, they, they started this in March and they gave away, out of the 35 million, they gave away like 14 million, the, the first half of it. And so now they're give, getting ready to give away the rest of it. So there's a deadline in there as well with the nonprofits that you wanna register with. But that other one again is LISC.org, Neighborhood Business uh, Grants, Local Initiatives and Support Corporations. And it's from the 18th of, that's today through the 23rd. Uh, there's also 20K for business sectors, construction, manufacturing, retail, transportation, warehouse, real estate, renting or leasing. Um, you know, with, with everything that's happened, um, you know, most of the, the governments and the local governments and communities where they put a thing where you couldn't evict or put it, evict anybody yeah. out or anything. And now that's been lifted. So a lot of these nonprofits like Home of Hope, uh, Chil Gwinnett's Children's Shelter, they're gonna be seeing a big influx of, you know, women and children that are gonna need a place to stay. So there's a lot of ways we can get involved in the community by helping these organizations. And there's many just like Home of Hope that, um, that are gonna have these women and children that are gonna need help, they're gonna need you know, food, they're gonna need donations with these people. So- And, and, and that, just going out in your community, like, like we did with our community, we, you know, we just did school supplies. It wasn't, you know, a few of us did it together. We helped, you know, 17 children at the Home of Hope. We helped uh, Beyond the Ribbon Cancer children. I mean, it's it's, you can do small things to make a big difference in your community. Absolutely, Sarah. And I, I want to give a big shout out to um, some of some of these ladies that that you and I know and have, have worked with us, partnered with us over the last four years in many uh, servant projects, servant uh, heart projects here. Uh, you know, Lisa Patterson with Table Ministries, you know, does an amazing thing with the homeless people. Uh, they also, they did a movie that they have gotten several awards and recognitions with the, with the movie. And um, I, it, it, I forget the name of it off the top of my head right this minute, but um, it, it's an, an amazing um, movie that they did. 
uh, about the homeless in the area. And it really amazed me when uh, Maureen had told us that, and this sounds like an, a staggering number, but it was something like over 500,000 people a night in Gwinnett County. Is that, is that sound like that's the right amazing. thing? That's, that's a huge number. I didn't realize there was that many. I mean, it was just, you know, that are living and, in- and, and the sad thing about it is a lot of times it's children too. You know, there's so many children that get caught up in a, in the situations with their parents or their single parent and they have no control over that. It's just heartbreaking. No, you know, they're sleeping in their cars and, and things of this nature. Um, the other one, you know, Bobby Minnick with yeah. Beyond the Ribbon, um, you, you're very familiar with that and I am too, but why don't you just share a little bit about that, about Beyond the Ribbon and Bobby Minnick, because both Bobby and Lisa have been tremendous uh, partners with us in the, in the community with uh, giving back over the last several years. Well, Bobby started Beyond the Ribbon to help families, um, who are going through cancer, uh, whether it be children, parents, whoever that might be, they may just need a ride to a doctor or they may need, they may need funds to keep the lights on because one parent is not working at the moment because they're with the child all the time. There's, there's numerous things that could happen where we just need a little bit of help sometimes or they may need some food and, and, and we don't take care of just the family. What if there's a pet? That pet still needs to eat. So Bobby makes sure that the pets are taken care of. She makes sure that everybody in that family has what they need when they're going through a very trying and emotional time. Um, it, it, it could just be so emotional draining for a family to go through that, for a spouse to see their spouse or for a big brother or a little brother to watch their, their sibling go through cancer. Uh, but Bobby's there to take care of that family in any way possible, whether if it's with rides or money or, or, or food or whatever that could be. It, I, I've been through breast cancer and, and they make these great little pillows for you that as a breast cancer, when you're going through that, that seatbelt can be, it can be very damaging to you as a breast cancer person. And they make these pillows to help protect you with that. So there's just so many things that they do. Uh, they like to have, they're gonna have a tea in October uh, where you come and have high tea and wear your fancy hat and your clothes. And it's just a fundraiser for them, but they're constantly doing things to help our community here in Gwinnett uh, provide for the families and uh, for the children. Absolutely. And you know, it's, it's bad enough when you're a family unit and, and you have a home and you have a career and, and you're going through this and they help that. But, you know, we also have uh, families that are living in an extended stay that yes. the, the, the mothers are going through that or they, they have a child with cancer that is going through that and they don't know you know, with this COVID-19 where they've been laid off or they didn't work and they don't know if they're, you know, they're going to be sleeping in their car, you know, next Monday or where the food's going to come from. And so they, they do a phenomenal thing with, with our community and we're always willing to help and give back to them. So we're very appreciative of, of both of those organizations. And then we have Tanya up there and um, coming that was on our show uh, I think it was last month or when Tanya was on our show with uh, Hope by Design, yeah. where helping with the uh, people starting back out in society, they've had a hardship and they have a, a I think right now they have 2000 square feet where they are, they have home, home um, furnishings and things of this nature to help people get started back out. Uh, also, I noticed that they had a lot of people that donated medical things to them, and Tanya took it up there to our friend Linda Gunter up in Hartwell because she has a hospital that she and her foundation founded in Haiti, and they chipped a container over there, and so she went over there and took her all this medical stuff. So we just have a lot of amazing people in the community doing some great things and giving back and serving. And that's what it's all about. As Sharita used that word collaboration, you know, you and I use the word collaboration, camaraderie, servant leadership, you know, even our own organization, 
organization, the Women of Community Impact, you know, we, we started this this year and then COVID-19 hit. We've had some, some Zoom meetings. We're going to get back into some of these Zoom meetings. And we we served Home of Hope during uh, Easter, where we took an Easter dinner over there. We took a Mother's Day dinner over there. And then we did the back to school thing. And we'll finish the year strong, Sarah, with you know, Thanksgiving as well as Christmas with the, with the needy organizations that, that need our help in this. And looking forward to servant leaderships that are looking to, to take part and be members with us in the, the Women of Community Impact. We have a, a lot of people in the, as, you, as some, most people know, I live part-time up in the Cincinnati area and I live in Atlanta part-time as well at our home where I'm at today and it's so nice to be home. Um, we have people up there that are interested in the women of community impact and taking it and opening up um, more organizations like that. So I'm excited uh, for where our growth is going to go. And even though we may be in the middle of COVID-19, we still can keep serving and giving yes. because that's what we're supposed to do. Um, we're supposed to serve and give. We're supposed to make a difference. And it's not what you can do for me. It's what I can do for you. You know, there's givers and there's takers. And it's always better to be a giver. Right. I grew up in a world where if your neighbor needed a coat or a new roof, you, you always were there to help your neighbor. Um, and we're just trying to provide that for our community here, um, whatever that in, in whatever that entails. Um, you know, we've enjoyed helping um, with human trafficking. Uh, we, we, I, I got thinking about some of this today. We've done quite a lot, and but it's we always get so much more out of it. We've met some awesome people in, in all of this and different organizations, just like with Sharita today. She was amazing. But, you know, just the people we've met over the time, it's been really good. Um, and, and they can always be there to help you. You know, now I've got a person I can call if I've got a question who's a nonprofit goddess, right? Right. You know, because one person can't know it all. That's true. Even though you're my sponsorship goddess. <laughs> Well, anyways, well, you know, this has, been, this has been a great show, Sarah, and we're going to wrap it up a little bit early here tonight. Um, I just want to thank you for your loyalty, your dedication, and most importantly, your servant heart. Uh, you have made a big difference in, in our community. Um, as long as I've known you, we started out serving um, with... Um, What was Heart of Gwinnett. It? Heart of Gwinnett. I couldn't think of it with Heart of Gwinnett. And, you know, and then our relationship started with serving first. Yes. And, you know, and it's grown and blossomed into a beautiful friendship, a sisterhood uh, over the last seven years. And, you know, we'll continue to serve together in the community um, and giving back and, and helping people because that's what we love to do is to help other people because it's not what you, like Sharita said, it's not what you can do for me. It's what I can do for you. Absolutely. And, and, and that's what, that's what we love doing. Uh, you've worked hard this year and you've had a lot of obstacles and I wish you nothing but the best for your vacation. Please stay safe. Enjoy. And I want to thank Penny with WCEG Talk Radio, Penny Rogers, uh, you and your committee. Thank you so much for hosting Sarah and I and giving us the opportunity to come here twice a month on the first Tuesday of the month for profit. The third Tuesday of the month is our nonprofit show, uh, Global Wealth and Legacy Building. And it's just a, a pure honor and privilege to, to be here and the community. Uh, if you would like to reach out to Sarah, if you need any additional help or questions on taxes, on the COVID uh, things that are going on or things that are made available, Sarah, how can they get a hold of you, please? Um, my uh, email is spoe, spo, at poecpas dot com. Uh, my phone number is 770-545-8841. Uh, and we'd love to help you in any way possible. And before we get out of here, I just want to thank you, Celeste, for all your leadership. And uh, I sometimes I see a squirrel and I go off in 10 different directions, but you help me stay on track. 
And I want to thank you for that because we don't always uh, we don't always acknowledge or tell people the things we're grateful for. And I just want you to know, without you, I wouldn't be where I am today. But thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that, and um, we appreciate our listeners. Um, I'm Celeste Giordano with CelesteGiordano.com, Master Sales Strategist and Business Mentor, and we look forward to seeing you. I think our next show is going to be the 8th, uh, the 8th of September for a profit, and then the, the nonprofit will be the, will be the third Tuesday in September, and we look forward to having some phenomenal guests on our show in September. So enjoy, have a safe holiday, and... Um, We'll see, see you in a couple we'll, of weeks. We'll see y'all then. Have a great All right. one. All right. Thank All you, right. Penny. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye.